Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be a thing that I know I have had a lot of requests on and this is something I've really been wanting to do, especially since I'm a lot farther in my recovery. So today's video is going to be on Q&A of my anorexia recovery. So we can go ahead and just get straight into the video. So uh, I put up like a question poll thing on my Instagram. This is my Instagram right here. Uh, questions that you guys have or questions about yourself that you might have from somebody else who's in recovery. So I put up a poll. I think it was last night. I got a bunch of answers. So I pulled like the most common ones to do for today's video. My little sheet here of questions that, you know, I want to get out to you guys. So I just hope who's ever watching this video can take something from this. Kind of put their selves first, put their health first, their life first. And I hope that if you ever need any help or anything, my DMs are always open. You can always reach out. And if you need anything, never ever be afraid to reach out for help to anybody. Your family, your mom, your dad, your siblings. Go into treatment, any of that. Don't live your life in misery where you're constantly consumed by this illness and just get your life back is what I would say. But without further ado, let's get into this video. So the first uh, question that I wanted to put in this video was, do I still get eating disorder thoughts or triggers? Yes, <laughs> all the time. Like it doesn't matter. Like I know I've been in recovery um, almost a year now, but I still get triggered and I still get thoughts when I'm eating. That voice is still in the back of my head, but it's not as strong as it was last year when I had first started recovery. My mindset is a lot different and how I deal with these thoughts and when these triggers come up is a lot better for myself. I'm like, okay, yeah, that thought's there, but I don't let it affect me and I don't let it change what I'm doing. So yes, I do still get thoughts and I do still get triggered, but they don't affect me as much as say they did last year. And another question that uh, came up a lot was what do I do when I get urges or when I have a sense of regret and I miss my old body? So I definitely do have things like that come up. Um, and what I kind of do is I take a step back um, I call it, what I learned in recovery when I was in my treatment is called diffusion. So you kind of go out. You think of yourself and then you go out a little bit more. You think of maybe your house that you're in and then you go out of your house. You go to like your town you think of your town and then you go to like maybe the city. And you kind of get a different view of the world to help with that thought of like, I am feeling bad about myself. Yes, these thoughts are coming up and I'm feeling triggered and... Things like that but it's also like okay how big of a deal is this do i miss my small body yes i do but do i want to go back there what else came with my small body sickness hospitals my parents having to play my food not being able to go to school not being able to go to the gym not being able to have anything in life except my life solely being revolved around this eating disorder and being sick so I always think about what is the greater good for myself? What do I really want? And that's what has honestly helped me a lot is like, is that a place you want to go back to? Um, number three is how to deal with eating when your fullness and hunger cues are all out of place. When you get sick with your eating disorder, your body will stop giving you fullness and hunger cues to stop wasting energy on things that your body isn't doing. So what um, my dietician told me is you may not be hungry, but you need to eat. You may not be getting that hunger cue, but your body still needs that food. And don't trust your body. When you're early into recovery, your body, you can't trust it. Your mind, you can't trust it. And that's why I would recommend if you're going into recovery to have a team, a team of people who you can trust and rely on, a dietitian, a therapist, your parents, your siblings, anyone who's in the right state of mind to really help you guide you through that. And with fullness and hunger cues, it's so hard in the beginning of recovery because they just aren't there at all. So that's why I'd recommend working with a dietitian 
um, in the beginning of your recovery. So number four was when did you finally accept your diagnosis? I was not diagnosed with anorexia until I was actually admitted into the hospital. I think it was like a week after my admission. I had a group of psych people come in and evaluate me and give me my diagnosis. So when I first got my diagnosis, I was like, no, like I don't have anorexia I don't have an eating disorder I'm not I'm not anorexic like what do you mean what are you talking about I was very much so in denial um and just as many people are when they have their eating disorder you don't think you're sick and if you do think you're sick you don't think you're sick enough so what I came to terms with again as I was kind of talking about is having somebody else who's in the right state of mind who is healthy who can give you a solid perspective on what is really happening and give you a really good reality check. Even if it's a harsh reality check, it's a reality check that you need. You're in the hospital because you're sick. You're in the hospital because you have an eating disorder. Not because they just want to put you in here. You're here because you're struggling with an eating disorder. And with continuous reminders and reality checks, I really came to acceptance of okay, I am sick and I do need help and that's why I'm here. So number five, probably the most requested question was, how did I get over the fear of weight gain? The beginning of recovery and when I was like admitted to the hospital and stuff, the thought of weight gain absolutely terrified me. I would cry at every single meal. Didn't matter if it was apples and peanut butter or if it was at egg and pretzels, I would cry because I didn't want to gain weight. I was so, so scared of eating. And what helped me with continuous reminders and reality checks, you are so sick, you need to eat like this. You are so sick, you need this nutrition. And I was like, yeah, I know I need it, but I don't want to gain weight. And it was the thought of... I'm here and I'm sick right now because I need to gain weight. Not because they just want me to gain weight to like make me fat or whatever. That would kind of be what my eating disorder thoughts were. But it was because I need to. Because if you don't want to die and if you want to live your life, if you want to have a family, if you want to be able to see your siblings again, your friends again, go home and actually have a life, you have to gain weight. You have to be at a healthy weight or else you're going to die. Your heart will stop and you have to put that into perspective. Would you rather be losing weight and be skinny, even though you will never be satisfied with how you are and how you look, or gain weight, be at a healthy weight? I'm not saying you're going to be fat if you recover, but if you gain weight to where you're healthy and your body can function normally, then there's not going to be an issue. Your mind will be in a healthy state by then and you won't view food as this bad thing and it will just come with continuous reminders and consistency in your recovery. Why am I gaining weight? Why do I need to gain this weight? Having a motivation for your recovery. I wanna go home and see my dog again. I don't wanna die in the hospital because I was too scared to gain weight. You know, you gotta really think about what you wanna prioritize in your life. So the next questions are, how long did it take me to recover and what made me want to recover? Question, I would say that I'm still in recovery. Um, I'm still struggling. I still struggle. Some days are easier than others. So I would say, how long did it take me to recover to get out of the hospital? If you're talking about um, like a physical rehabilitation, it took me about six months. So I was in the hospital for a month and then I was in... Um, inpatient treatment for about five months. What made me want to recover? I'd from kind of being forced into recovery at the beginning was getting my life back. And when you kind of get that sense and that taste of freedom from your eating disorder and what life can be like without an eating disorder, you are just like, that's not a place I want to go back to. And this feeling of having this energy from food and viewing food as fuel and not the enemy. Knowing that I want better in life, I want better in life for myself, is something that I was like, I want to recover. I don't want to be sick like this anymore. Probably my most requested question in the poll 
was how did I deal with body changes and weight gain? If you have an eating disorder, you probably are aware of what body dysmorphia is. And with weight gain and recovery, it doesn't help. <laughs> it honestly, it's, it's hard. Um, but what I did was I took away my mirrors. I had all my mirrors out of my room. Um, I No scales, no body checking. I would be disciplined enough with myself to know doing that is going to set me farther back on my road to recovery. It's going to make it harder. It's going to make eating harder. Do I want to body check and see maybe I'm not so happy with myself or take a step away? No, I don't want to do that. I'm going to prioritize myself, my mental health right now. And I'm not going to body check because the more you body check, the worse your body dysmorphia gets. The more your mind is going to warp your body into something it doesn't look anything like, okay? Body dysmorphia makes you look huge or makes you cannot believe what you see in the mirror because what you see in the mirror is a warped perception of a body that is not actually how you look. Up with the body checking is how I got with my weight gain um, and how I dealt with it throughout my, the beginning of my recovery. When did I realize my illness was out of control? A month before my hospitalization where my family would kind of come to me. Uh, they would be worried. They would be like, hey, you need to eat. I'm worried about you. You aren't looking so good. But of course I was in denial. So I didn't really realize my illness was out of control. Not even when I was admitted to the hospital or when the doctors told me my heart could have stopped. It was probably once I got released from the hospital was when I was like, this is really bad. Did I struggle with exercise addiction and how I fixed it? So I did actually struggle with an exercise addiction. I, I would just remember like forcing myself to exercise. And exercise, they wouldn't even feel good. I felt like I was dragging myself to the gym and I just felt like I was dying in everyone. And I exercise now because it feels good and it makes my body feel amazing. <laughs> but how did I fix an exercise addiction? It's one solution stop exercising i didn't exercise probably for about two months and when i did start exercising again it was only like light walks and then maybe some yoga slightly 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 increases it while also having somebody else being able to monitor me and be like hey maybe you should rest today so a piece of advice i would give anyone who is struggling is be in acceptance that you're struggling. Be in acceptance that yes, I am in this situation right now and I am struggling. It's hard. Maybe I don't want help. Maybe you don't want help. Maybe you do. Maybe a part of you does, but a part of you doesn't. And I would tell you, what do you prioritize in life? What do you want? Do you want to get sick and end up in the hospital? Because ending up in the hospital will not give you the validation that you think it's going to give you. It isn't. It's only going to make recovery way harder. And I would reach out to get help before it's too late. Before you start having heart issues. Before effects start destroying your body. Before you lose your period. Before your hair starts falling out. Before any of that, if you're struggling mentally reach out and get help there's so many resources out there there's dietitians there's treatment programs so many people who are out here to help you because this disease is a fucking terrible one that will kill you that's all an eating disorder wants is it wants you dead and you will never ever be satisfied it doesn't matter if you're in the hospital you won't be satisfied it doesn't matter if you're dead, your eating disorder will not be satisfied. So what you need to do, really think about what do I prioritize in life? What do I want? Sorry, my uh, camera like glitched out. No idea what just happened. But that's kind of it for today's video. Um, and if you have any questions, if you're struggling, my DMs are always open. Um, my Instagram account is right here. And I just hope that if you're struggling, you're able to realize it and get the help you need because you don't deserve a life consumed by an eating disorder. Nobody does. So, thanks for watching today's video and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.